Good afternoon, students. Um, welcome back to this lesson, the revision lesson again, like the one we had yesterday, just that we are moving forward today. Um, I hope Eugene has made it possible for you to unmute yourselves because I need your active participation for the success of this lesson. Feeling well, I want you to uh, talk to me. You have to remind me your names. I guess. names I see here. I learned yesterday that uh, some of the names I see here are not really your names. So please feel free to tell me your names so that I can get to know you. And I hope you can all see my screen. I am your teacher, Lindy, and um, I can start now. Today, we look again at frame structures, the purpose of structural members, and the forces that act on structures. And um, as I promised yesterday, it's an effort to cover what you have done from the beginning of the year and to get you ready for the assessments that you'll be conducting. Okay, then we look also at the step T and the stiffness of structures. Okay, it's just a revision of structures. What you see here is an example of frame structures. We see this all the time, and it is um, a way of transmitting electricity from the power stations to different destinations, to substations specifically. So I liked this example because it's what you come across every day when you're traveling. But uh, I want us to look at these structures as example of frame structures. Frame, even the word suggests that you see is a frame. But some structures, they do have a frame that we cannot see, like the sofa, the couches that you sit on at home. They have something that is frame inside, but you can see that frame. I like these pylons because we can actually see the frame and how it is designed. I would like to say that the frame of the electricity pylons is made up of, of numerous triangles. You can see different shapes there, but uh, the basic one that you see there is triangles. So in technology, we talk about triangulation. Triangulation is one of the things that makes our structures rigid and firm. Can you imagine if this electricity pylon did not have these triangles to make it firm? It would be dangerous for us when we are traveling to have these electricity pylons collapsing. It would drop these wires, electrical wires. It would drop them and it could be uh, something dangerous for everyone in the environment. So to lift the wires, we need a strong and a firm frame structure. You see? So the frame structure is primarily made to support. That is the function of 
uh, form structures. They are made to support. So in this case, the electricity pylons are supporting the wires that those can can um, can can transmit can transmit electricity from the passing to the substations. So with this, you got the purpose, one of the purposes for structures, frame structures are used to give support. I hope I'm not too fast for you guys. You're very quiet today. You're not talking to me. Okay. And another example of a frame structure, we took this one, I love it, is a scaffolding. Ayanda, speak my darling. Hello, Ayanda. Ayanda, you have your hand raised. I do not. Um, Are you all? Oh. Good day, ma'am. Hello. Good day, Ayanda. <laughs> um, Are you good? So yes, ma'am. Can you ma can you hear me? Ma'am, you're glitching a bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. But I think you glitching. I'm not sure if it's my device or It could be my device. Oh, thank you, ma'am. It could be mine. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry about that. Uh, it, it it seems the the the, the network here, the Wi-Fi, it's a little bit unstable. I'm sorry about that. But do indicate to me if we are still together. Thank you, Aida. Yes, ma'am. Thank. You. Um, the the the, the scaffolding. What do we use the scaffolding for? Who can tell me what to use the scaffolding for? Where have you seen such a structure? Hello, Asanda. Yes, Asanda, speak. Um, mem, mem, we use it for buildings. Um, so the scaffolding helps us if you're gonna be building a maybe a very large or high building, we'll be able to use that instead of using a ladder, ma'am. Very good, very good. And and when you meet the structure of this scaffolding, can you identify the little triangles in the structure? One. There is a triangle here. You see, there is a triangle here. And even this, this member, it makes up this triangle. So you can identify triangulation in this scaffolding. So it is very important this, that the scaffolding should be firm because if it's not firm, it's gonna, make evidence for this builder who is using it. Because if a person must work in a high building, maybe constructing, um, maybe doing construction, the scaffolding must be firm. It must be trusted to hold the way of the person that they are well built and the members are of sound quality at all times so that so this is another frame this person who is building 
and to the person to reach a, a, a big heights. This picture, because you can see me. You're with me? Does anyone want to speak? Ushe, you want to speak? Please try and uh, just unmute yourself to speak, okay? I'm going to have us to speak so that Okay, it's another frame structure, the roof truss. Some of you cannot see the roof truss in your buildings because of the ceiling. I hope you can hear me. The roof truss is what is supporting the roof, okay? The roof truss is what is supporting the roof. Can you all hear me? Now, we must look at the, 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 the structure, the structural members of a roof truss. We have roof trusses and we also have other trusses like bridge truss. Okay, you have seen um, um, the frame, the frame structure around bridges. That is also called a truss. So uh, I'm going to take you through the names of the structural members. So in your truss, that vertical member is called the king. Okay. Now, this one on which the roof tiles or the corrugated iron will rest is called the principal rafter. So basically, you have the main, main members being the principal rafter, the king post supporting the principal rafters on both sides, and the tie beam. The tie beam is going to be horizontal and it's going to rest on the walls. Okay. So, you have the queen post. The queen post will be connecting the principal rafter, the queen post, on both sides to the tie beam. Okay? The tie beam is horizontal. The queen post will be vertical. And the king post will be like the main pillar that is going to hold the principal raptors. And the smaller ones that will be parallel to the queen post, um, some other technologies will call them the princess posts because they are smaller than the queen. Okay. So when you look at these members, the main pillar will be the king post. Then the queen post, then the princess post. Then supporting the roof will be the principal rafters. So you have your rafters and your posts. The main one being the king, the queen, and the princess. <laughs> it's very, I hope you don't forget that. And then resting on the wall, that, uh, horizontally, 
will be the tie beam. That will be the tie beam, okay? I hope you don't forget these members, okay? When we come back to the, to, 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 to the interaction of these members with forces, then we'll come back to the names of these members. I hope you understand it. Okay, can you move forward? All right. The horizontal member, the functions of the members in a structure. The horizontal member, which is the tie beam, I said the tie beam is resting on what? Is resting on the wall, the tie beam, this one. What is the function of the tie beam? The tie beam prevents the two sides from ripping apart. It is connecting these principal rafters. It is connecting these. Okay, the principal rafters, they are connected to the tie beam. Okay. Instead of a plank, a rope or wire. Instead, a plank, a rope or wire can be used to tie the bottom ends of the two sides together. Okay, but because we are doing a roof, we need that tie beam because it spans the distance from one wall to another. When a plank or piece of steel is used for this purpose, it is called a tie beam. All right, in a, in a, 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 a roof truss, you always have a piece of timber or a piece of steel because you do have steel roof truss. You always need a member that is going to span the distance between one wall and the other. A tie beam has to be strong enough so that it will not be ripped apart by the forces acting on it. The weight of the roof plates pressing down on the trusses can cause the ends of the trusses to pull apart. You can say that the, there is tension in the tie beam. The type of force that acts on the tie beam is what is tension. Why? Because it stretches from this one end to the other end. Okay. Ensure that uh, there are no termites, because if this, if something happens to these principal rafters, what will happen? The roof will collapse. So the principal rafters are what is really giving shape to the roof. Okay. You can say that there is tension in the tie beam, just like there is tension in a rope you pull. Forces that cause tension are called tensile forces, okay? When you look at this tie beam, when you look at this tie beam, we said you can use a rope instead, but you haven't seen a roof being held by a rope. So that's why we use a piece of timber or a piece of steel to span the distance between this wall and that wall. So imagine if this was a, a rope, it could be a rope that is pulled from this side to that side. Let me see your chats. You like chatting. You like chatting. Is this term three or term two? It's revision of term one and two. Okay, it's a revision. Because we have to write assessment that covers term one and two, all right? Um,
Now you understand the functions of the different structural members in a roof truss. Let us look at the forces. Just imagine if this is a tie beam, okay? Because a beam spans the distance between one column and another column. This column could be a wall or any other column, even if it's a bench, okay? The leg of a bench, to us, we call it a column. It can be a column because it's an upright member, so it becomes a column. So when we look at the forces, the force, a, a, a weight that exerts force, that can force like that on the beam, it's called compression force. On top of the beam, there is compression force because it is pressed down, it is compressed. But when you look at the bottom part of the beam, it is pulled. It is pulled this way. It's like um, we made the example of a rope that is being pulled. So these forces, the tension force, it will pull the, 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 the bottom part of the beam into opposite directions. In some structures that are not well built, you have seen how this member, for example, a lintel, a lintel in a building, you have seen how it bends. If it is too long to span the distance between the two pillars or columns, it can bend like this. So that is how structural members react to forces. When we build structures, we have to bear in mind that forces will be acting on the structure. For instance, if you are building, perhaps we are building a garage, we are want to make a double or a triple garage. I don't know if it's really called a triple garage, but a garage that will accommodate three cars. Mm -hmm. And we have to spend the distance. We need a tie beam that a lintel, a lintel is also an example of a tie. If we are going to build many bricks on this, those bricks will exit a compression force on the lintel. And what is going to happen? It will bend like this. I've seen this. I hope that you have seen also a, a lot of um, a, 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 what I call structural failure when the structural members cannot take the compression force anymore and it makes a, 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 an ugly bend, eh? an ugly bend, maybe sometimes at the gates, I've seen some gates with that, I've seen some garages with that, some verandas with that, you see that this, this member is now succumbing to the compression force and you can see the bending. Now, that is how structural members can react to forces. Now, we have different types of forces that act on structures. I want you to look at these forces and you have to remember them, these forces. Okay. I want you to look at these forces. You have your compression and tension. Okay, compression presses down from com uh, tension pulls apart. And then there is bending. You see? The expanding. If I can take you back to this, I'm trying to go back to the previous slide. Okay, I don't know why it's refusing to go back there. Okay, but if you look at this, you saw that the, the that beam, it was, it, it was bending. So. This is the bending, it's the same bending that you saw on the beam. 
and you have a twisting force a twisting force it's called torsion right and then you have another force that you can maybe compare to um, a, a force of rubbing you know if there is friction so you get this force which is called sharing force okay those are forces that act on structures those are forces that act on structures okay tension you can feel um tension force when you link your hands together and pull when you 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 you, you join your your fingers and you pull that's the tension that you feel and then torsion when you wrap your hands against each other and you can feel a talk a force no, that is sharing uh, you can feel a torsion force if you grip the thumb of your right hand inside the palm of your your left hand and twist that twisting kind of force is called torsion compression you've seen compression sharing sharing if you put your hands together and you you wrap your hands together maybe if you 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 have been um handling soil and you even or, or even sugar or any particles between your hands if you are wrapping your hands together then the friction that you get there is what is called sharing okay bending i'll show you an example of bending where there is a um, um, where there is a, 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 a tension and compression okay yeah it becomes a, a little bit difficult if we are, we are going to a, now these are the forces tension torsion compression sharing and bending please remember those forces that act on structures okay use this illustration this is the illustration that will help you remember this is compression this is tension bending twisting is torsion sharing remember your two hands rubbing against each other that friction is what will give you what sharing okay i hope we are together now i want you to exercise i want you to go through to see if you can remember the forces. I want you to talk to me now. Indicate to show which forces are acting in each example. A book hanging on a hook. What is that? A book hanging on a hook. What force is that? I want you to um Jessica, I want you to note your responses because I will show you what are the correct answers. Jessica, what is it?
Nishanshan? You like chatting. <laughs> That is tension. Lynn said it's tension. I want you to note that. A lift, a light fitting, hanging from a ceiling. You don't want to speak to me today. You want to chat. A light fitting hanging from a ceiling. A light fitting. Unmute yourself, Natasha. I want you to speak. <laughs> I don't know why you're not speaking. You want to chat. Because you don't want to speak to me. I wanted us to quickly go through this, but you don't want to speak. You want to chat. Let's see. Ma'am? Yes. Can you hear me? I think it's tension, ma'am. Hook hanging on a hook is tension. Light fitting hanging from a ceiling, it's what? Um, it tension also, ma'am. Okay. Uh, who am I speaking to now? Ntlantla, ma'am. Ntlantla, yes, thank you, Ntlantla. Um, roof tiles on the rafters. Hmm. I mean, I think it's compression. Compression, okay. Turning a spanner. Uh, torsion. Turning a spanner because it's piston. Yes, um, bookshelf sagging. Uh, I remember I don't know that one. Okay, here are the answers. <laughs> I don't know how I quickly moved to this. Here are the answers, Ntlantla. Book uh, hanging on a hook is tension. A light fitting hanging from a ceiling is tension. Roof tiles is compression. Turning a spanner is torsion. Bookshelf sagging is bending. It's yes, bending. Um, I don't know why my, my, my screen is shortened now. Okay. Um, let's see if we can go back to the table. Cutting with scissors. Cutting with scissors, what will that be? Cutting with scissors, what force will that be? Sharing, sharing, you're right. <laughs> yeah, so um, these are the forces that act on uh, structures. Imagine if you have to build a, any structure, even a chair, you have to think how you, 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 you connect the materials so that you will remember that these materials will be acting to different forces that act on structures. So it becomes very important how you are going to um, assemble your structural members. If we can go back to this. If we can go back to this structure, 
if you look at the structural members here, you can imagine if maybe we did have the the queen post and most princess posts. It was just the king and there was this long type. Maybe a uh, this means that the tie beam has to, to span between these two columns, which are the walls, could make the compression to be too big for the principal rafter, and the principal rafter would start bending. So to prevent bending of the principal rafter, we have had to add these other structural members queen pose and those principles. And then we also had to do some triangulation to get the type in the principal rafter. So this is, is affect, this, this is a preventing the bending that will be caused by the weight of the roof tiles on the principal rafter. You have to think about these forces when you construct your structures. So, um, you look at the size of the structure. If this is big, maybe it wouldn't need all these mess, but bigger, the bigger this roof truss, the more the need for us to add other structural members to prevent what bending or structural failure. Because once in your house, if this roof truss is not built well, the structural members, are, this roof will collapse. Now you can why structures collapse. It is because sometimes people don't think about the size of the structure and the design which is necessitated by the size of the structure okay like this one if if the if the isn't that long maybe it wouldn't be but if the beam is long and the weight is heavy, then it will cause the beam to bend. People don't think about this most of the time when they are making their structures. So it's very, very important to remember this. We must make our structures stable and safe. I liked this. I liked the example of the swing and this um what do you call this who can tell me what you call this is it a swing or what what do you call it who can tell me a swing chair or what Beach swing. <laughs> Thanks, Natalie. <laughs> it's a beach swing. Oh, thank you. But I didn't know the name of the swing. I, 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 I just call it a swing chain. A beach swing. It's a hammock. Know the word hammock either. Thank you. Hammock, hammock. All right, thank you. Now, let us look at structural design of the hammock or a beach swing. And, um, we all know, we can see the reason why this needs to be firm. It needs to be firm and for reasons that are very obvious to all of us, because if it's not stiff and it's not firm, it becomes something very 
too dangerous to use. Okay. The vertical bars. Me, what vert vertical is something that goes. We are looking at the frame. Okay. What is the function of the vertical bars and what is the function of the horizontal bars? Let's discuss it. Okay, don't look a lot at the marks. I just want us to discuss it so we can understand. Looking at these vertical bars, what are their function? It is to hold the rest of the swing up, okay? It is to, um, the vertical bus is to hold the whole structure up because you need it to be, to be up, to be high for it to function as a swing, all right? So we need a proper height. So these, will give us a proper height. But now, when um, the horizontal, look at this horizontal bar and horizontal bar. What is the function of these horizontal bars? I can see my internet is acting up. I hope you can hear me. What is the function of the horizontal bars? The horizontal bars, Asanda? The function of the horizontal bars, Asanda? Um, Ma'am, it's to keep the swing rigid and stable, I think. Yes. And can you identify this triangle? Yes, ma'am, I can. Yeah. And it is the triangulation is used to make our structure stable. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Very good. Asanda. It is to make um the 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 the, the, the structure stable to hold it together. All right. This horizontal bar, what is it? What is its function? The function of this horizontal bar. Asanda? Yes, Asanda? The horizontal bars, what do they do? The top one in the middle. The horizontal bar. I'm just looking at the answers here. Asanda, proceed. This horizontal bar, what do you call it? This horizontal bar, what did you call it in the other structures? Because it spans the distance between these vertical ones. This horizontal bar spans the distance between this horizontal and that horizontal this vert uh, um, vertical and this vertical one. So this horizontal one, it is spanning this distance. What is it for? Let's say D. Let's say D, yes, let's say D. Okay, let's say D. Lisedi, please unmute yourself.
ma'am yes lady ma'am that that horizontal beam that horizontal bar is called a tie beam it is called a tie beam thank you very much and it is what is the function i think the function the is to to hold to hold the swing to hold the swing up yes. Mm -hmm. It is holding the swing because the swing is, is, is attached to the tie beam in this case. Ne? Yes, ma'am. And also to, to connect these two vertical yes, members, these two vertical structures. It is connecting, it is spanning the distance between these two vertical structures and it is also holding the, um, the swing. So it acts on the weight, the pulling weight of the person who's using the swing. All right. Now, do you think these structures are stable? What is it that makes them stable or not stable? When you look at these structures, could you say they are stable? Yes. They are stable. What makes what makes these structures stable? Asanda, you can speak. If you say they are stable, why? Why do you think these structures are stable, Asanda? Ma'am, I think they're stable because they have triangulation used to strengthen the frame structure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just imagine if these two members did not form a triangle. If these two members did not form a triangle, but if they, if they maybe were, were, were parallel and they were joined by another member, the structure would not be stable, would it, Asanda? No, ma'am, it would not be stable. You know, triangles in structures, they make our structures more stable than um, squares or rectangles. Have you noticed that? Yes. So we yes, found it easier to make structures that are triangulated for them to be anchored and be stable on the ground. Because imagine if we had we had a, a, a square, a square top, if maybe the top of the of this swing would be a square structure would be dancing from one side to another, then it wouldn't be a stable or a stiff structure. Right. What about the stiffness? How do we know that these structures are stiff? What, which members is it that make the structure stiff? Let us look at this one, especially, I like this one because there are more members here. What is it that makes this structure stiff? Asanda? Ma'am, I think it's the cross bracing. The cross bracing at the yes, top here. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. 
the cross bracing at the top, it, it makes more triangulation, though therefore connecting the, 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 the tie beam to the vertical um, to the vertical members. So we know that these vertical members, they, are they have a tight connection with the tie beam. So it makes the structure stiff. The person sitting here, when they exert um, a, a force, a pulling force on the on the on the tie beam, will not make the the tie beam to collapse because it is well attached using the cross bracing. Thank you even for for using the word cross bracing. Thank you very much. And another question, what is the purpose of the horizontal bar between the cross members? How Why are the ropes of the left hand swing in tension? The, 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 the ropes, okay, no, not necessarily of the le left hand or this swing. Why are they in tension? What, what could cause the ropes to be in tension? What kind of a force gives us tension? Or what kind of action will give us tension? Can you imagine someone sitting on the swing and then their weight will pull the ropes? So the pulling will exert and the ropes when they are pulled will be in tension. When a person is sitting on, on this swing, the ropes will be in tension. Okay. Right. And um, these are your answers. Uh, the vertical ones height give height to the swing, and the horizontal ones give stability. Those are the members, the vertical ones and the horizontal ones. Um, structures are very stable because of the position of the triangles. We talked about the triangulation. You can check that against the answers that you are giving me. Uh, 1.3 structures are very stiff and rigid due to the nature of the material. So they will not bend, okay? But also cross bracing also is correct. The horizontal bar supported between the cross members forms a triangle. That was the triangulation. The weight on the left hand swing seat will cause the ropes to be in tension. That is what I was explaining right now. The left hand swing seat supported by ropes in tension, both stiffness and strength. Okay. And thank you very much for attending this lesson. I hope you have seen the questions and the answers that are expected when you are answering those questions concerning structures. Thank you very much.